All right, guys, welcome back to Engineers Academy. Uh, kindly subscribe my channel if you are here for the first time. Now we are going to solve this problem, which says that the assembly consists of two blocks A and B, which have a mass of 20 kg and 30 kg respectively. So block A has a mass of 20 kg and block B has a mass of 30 kg. And we are required to determine the speed of each block when B descends 1.5 meters. So when B moves downwards, that is 1.5 meters, we have to find the speed of both of the blocks. And it is said that the blocks are released from rest. So the initial velocity of both the block is zero, right? So we can say that uh, at initial state, uh, the velocities of both the blocks is zero. So the kinetic energy in both the blocks in the initial states are zero. So now uh, we need to apply the uh, law of conservation of energy but before that since both the blocks are the motion of both the blocks are dependent on each other so we have to find the relationship between the motion of both the blocks. So for that we have to define our datum line so this is my datum line since this point of the whole system is fixed right this is our datum. and the position of block A is measured uh, in the downward direction that is the positive direction of the moment and that is measured by using this variable SA and similarly the direction of the motion of the block B is measured in this direction and measured with the help of the variable that is SB. So now if you write the equation uh, for the length of the rope so only this part of the rope and this part of the rope and this part of the rope they are changing the length of these are increasing and decreasing so we are having the change in these three uh, part of the rope and similarly in this part of the rope right so this is if this is sa so sa plus sa plus sa so we will have three sa three sa plus this part of the rope remains constant this part of the rope remains constant and this part and this part they remain constant right so the change is only in this part, this part, and this part, and this part of the rope, right? So this is 3SA plus SB, and this is equal to the length of the rope, and if we take the derivative with respect to time, so that will be 3DSA by DT, so this will be 3VA plus DSB by DT, so that is VB, and DL by DT, so the length of the rope remains constant, so the derivative of this length with respect to time is zero. So now this is the relationship we can say that uh, Vb is equal to minus 3Va and similarly we can write uh, the equation for the change in length of the rope. So we can write that 3 change in Sa plus change in Sp and the overall change will be equal to 0 since the length of the rope remains constant. So now we are given that when B descends 1.5 meters so we are given that as b is equal to 1.5 meters and descends mean that uh, as b moves in the downward direction so let's say as b reaches somewhere here let's say this is the next position of as b so let's say as b reaches somewhere here and this is the next state of as b so so let's say that for gravitational potential energy, let's say this is my datum line since we are going to apply the law of conservation of energy, this is the new datum and this datum is for gravitational energy, right? So uh, this block moves from state 1 to state 2, block B moves uh, how much? 1.5 meters from here to here, this is 1.5 meters. So we have to find the distance moved by block A when this block B moves downward. So from this equation we can write that uh, 3 delta SA is equal to minus delta SP or we can say that delta SA is equal to minus 3 delta SB divided by 3. So we are given this uh, delta SB so delta SB is 1.5 so if I put 1.5 in this equation minus 1.5 divided by 3 so delta SA is equal to 1.5 divided by 3 is minus 0 0.5 meters. So now when this block B uh, moves downward to state 2, block A moves up. 
and that distance traveled by block A when it move up is, let's say it reaches here. So that is this distance it travels from the datum line from its initial state is 0 0.5 meters. So this is 1.5 meters and this is 0 0.5 meters. Now we need to apply the law of conservation of energy. So according to law of conservation of energy, the kinetic energy at state 1 of both the blocks plus the potential energy of both the blocks at state 1, that will be equal to the kinetic energy of both the blocks at their states 2 plus the uh, potential energies at their second state, right? So this is the second state of this block A and this is the second state of this uh, block B. So uh, it is said that the, the blocks are released from rest. So both the blocks are released from rest. So at state 1, the velocity of both the blocks is 0. So the kinetic energy of both the blocks will be 0. And at initially both the blocks are located at the datum line. So when they are located at the datum line, the gravitational potential energy is 0 as well. So the kinetic energy of both the blocks is 0. And similarly, the gravitational potential energy for both the blocks is 0 as well and T2 will be the kinetic energy of block B plus the kinetic energy of block A. So we can write that the kinetic energy of block A will be 1 divided by 2 and the mass of block A is 20. This is given, this is 20. So that is 20 into VA. Let's say that the velocity of block A is VA at state 2. So that is VA square and plus 1 divided by 2, the kinetic energy of block B and the mass of block B is 30, so 1 divided by 2 into 30 and the velocity of block B squared and plus the gravitational potential energy of block A. So the gravitational potential energy of block A, let me write that the gravitational potential energy of block A at state 2. So that is equal to weight times y, the distance traveled from the datum line. So mass of block uh, A is 20 into 9.81 and Y is the distance traveled is 0 0.5 meters and it is in the positive direction from the datum. So this is plus 0 0.5. So this is, we can write this as 20 into 9.81 into 0 0.5. Similarly, the gravitational potential energy of block B at state 2 is again MGY mgy and that is mass is 30 for block b and this is 9.81 and the distance traveled is in the downward direction right so that is negative that is minus 1.5 so this is plus 30 into 9.81 into minus 1.5 so this is zero and this is 20 divided by 2, so this is 10 VA square. 30 divided by 2 is 15 VB square. And let me find this, Both let me add both of these terms. So this is 20 into 9.81 into 0 0.5 plus 30 into 9.81 into minus 1.5. So this is uh, minus 343.35, so minus 343.35. So this whole equation is equal to 0 and we can write Vb in terms of Va. So if I replace this Vb in terms of Va and we can write this equation equal to 0, I can write this 0 on the right hand side as well. So now we have the equation like this and this is 10. Va square plus 15 and Vb is minus 3Va square and minus 343.35 and this is equal to 0. And I can bring this to the other side of equation so this will become positive. So this is 10Va square and plus 15 and this will become 9 Va square. So we can add both of these terms. This is 343.35. So this is 10, 10 plus 10 plus 15 into 9. 
So this is 145. So this is 145 VA square equals to 343.35. And similarly, VA is equal to 343.35 divided by 145. And if we take the square root, we will be able to find the velocity of block A at state 2. So this is 343.35 divided by 145 so this is 1.54 so the velocity of block a at state 2 is uh, 1.54 1.54 meter per second and now we have this relationship so the velocity of block b is three times the velocity of block a so we can write that the velocity of block b is three times the velocity of block a which is 1.54 so we have to multiply that answer by 3. So answer multiply by 3. This is 4.62 approximately. So this is 4.62 meter per second. So now when block B descends 1.5 meters in the downward direction, the block A moves 0.5 meters in the upward direction. And uh, at state 2, the block A will have a velocity of 4.62 meter per second and the block B will have the velocity of 4.62 meter per second and block A will have 1.54 meter per second velocity. So this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope you people will find uh, all my videos helpful in your studies. Let me know in the comment section if they help in your learning. Also subscribe my channel if you haven't subscribed it yet and like all these videos if you people want me to solve such more problems from Hibler Dynamics.